We will be in conversation with the chairperson of uh, that particular uh, committee, the Section 194, that is, and that's Woody uh, Yankee, um, just to try and get uh, the very latest on this uh, particular issue. But let's go on to this now. The so, In fact, I am told that uh, we are getting him to come onto the line. And remember that uh, Advocate Mkwabane has, of course, been talking about this, being a travesty of justice and uh, really calling for that particular, um, you know, inquiry to then be halted and uh, pause and not continue because she's not able um, to then provide for her own um, you know legal fees here and saying that this is something that she really would like for you know parliament to look into you heard her raise the issue around the fact that the evidence leaders are still in this very inquiry and the evidence leaders themselves are also then being paid why are her lawyers not being paid from the same fiscus and these are some of the arguments that she makes and at the same time when you read her letter she talks about how um, the appears to be an agenda here and that could signal that she still feels like this process is not being fair and uh, there is of course that particular matter of you know also where we are you know where they are seeking a recusal um you know for the chair as well as one of the mps to recuse themselves from this process so let's get now to speak to Yanti, who is the chair of the section 194 inquiry who joins us live now Tata, thank you so much for your time we appreciate it this evening Looking at some of the moments between you and Advocate Nkwebana, particularly even yesterday as well, we cannot help but ask the question, is there something going on there? Well, good, good evening, uh, Bongiwe, and to your viewers of uh, Full View of SABC. Well, I don't know when you say is there something going on there, but what I do know is that we are involved in a very important inquiry uh, that is there to check the fitness to hold office mm. of uh, uh, um, and obviously as you know from the very start it's been a very interactive process maybe it's, it's by its uh, inherent in its in its nature uh, but there's there's nothing personal mm. um it, we, we we focus on the task that we have to do and um that's that's what we're doing Speaking about the task at hand, uh, let's start with yesterday. I mean, I was watching um, at the very beginning, and I'm sure a lot of people have seen that exchange. And, 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 and I'm interested to know what happened here. I mean, you start by saying that you will give her a hearing. And then as you continue to speak, then you change your mind and you say you are not going to be giving her a hearing because this is a committee meeting. And then an exchange ensues between the two of you. Why did you change your mind there? Was it, did something happen? I was just trying to understand there. It's a very good question and I'm so observant because I did say that, <laughs> that I was going to give you a hearing as I started. But I, I, I realized as I was speaking that no, I can't give her a, a, a hearing. This is a committee meeting. She's there listening in as a member of the public. And uh, there are thousands of them who have been joining us and how we operate in Parliament, in the National Assembly. When a session is dedicated to members, it is for the members. It's members who raise hands and they, and they talk about issues. Uh, members of the public do not participate. And so it's for that reason that I started in that way and then realized, no, you would be wrong, actually, mm. uh, Judge to allow her to speak. And that's when I decided and I, and I told her that I'm not going to allow you to speak. Could it not maybe, um, you know, in that moment, maybe you could understand how she feels that, the, the, you know, she's not given a chance and then she got very frustrated because maybe of what you said earlier that could have maybe led to the exchange. Do you think it could have been handled differently, maybe? I think it could have been handled differently from her side, and she knows how to handle it differently. Because all what she was putting on the table, Bongi, was that she 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 was informing the committee uh, by getting into a meeting that she has written a letter. That's not how it's done. Um, she has been writing too many letters. She knows the processes. The letters are sent to the to the secretary, and and will respond having received mm. uh, that correspondence. So they, it, it was very clear that uh, she, she knew where she was sitting, that she was doing something wrong, that she shouldn't be doing. 
And let's talk about the letter because the, the latest letter which she did say she'll release and we've seen it in public. She accuses the committee of having an agenda and she says that, you know, some of the closing and the opening remarks and addresses or arguments that is are meant to do damage control after the evidence that she had led in respect of the CR-17 and the SARS rogue unit matters. Your response? The, the exercise we started on Monday, I would have indicated that uh, we are stepping off the inquiry uh, because uh, she was not, she's not having legal representatives and therefore we are getting into a committee session where we allow the committee members uh, to be empowered by the evidence leaders on the evidence that has already been laid down over six days, covering two charges by herself and her legal team. And in that space, and, and up to today, if, if you look back from Monday, the two people who have benefited from what we have, we have done, the members have benefited and they have said that themselves today, but the public protector have benefited from that exercise because she now knows we have given her heads up about the kind of questions and the issues that we're going to need clarity from. So she has benefited from that. So there's, there's, nothing, there's, there's nothing unfair of what we've done. And in any case, it is part of our design as a committee. The evidence leaders have been put into that at the beginning because we've been transparent in this entire process. Mm -hmm. We had three options. We, we, we discussed whether we needed to have just an inquiry that is just led by members alone or an inquiry that is just led by an evidence leader alone. And we then opted for the third option, which is an, a hybrid, where we have got members who are then, who, who sought an expertise and are held by the evidence leaders. Yeah. So they are a resource to the committee. They are there to help us make sense of the merits of the evidence. So what we did is part of our own design. There's, so there's nothing untold. I'm sure you've seen, pardon me for coming in there, I'm sure you've seen her argument that, uh, you know, she says these are the same evidence leaders that would be paid from the fiscus. And she believes that as the committee, you should have made everything humanly possible to ensure that she also does have her own legal representation because as she argues, she says she did not ask for this process and like the courts have said, that she must have legal representation. So she feels that the committee let her down on this particular aspect. How do you respond? Two things, Bongi. The, the Constitutional Court, and we agree with that, even though initially we, we had a different view, that, that she's entitled to a legal representation. But that doesn't go further to indicate that that legal representation must be paid by who. It mm -hmm. doesn't say that. But, but secondly, it's uh, from the 1st of March, there would have been a letter received from the Public Protector South Africa, the office itself which went to them, copied to myself as a chair, that said, by the 31st of March, we would, be, we would have run out of funds. And therefore, negotiate and start a plan as to how beyond the 31st of March, we are going to do this. By Friday, it became clear there was no effort to get in, in, into that space. And we have been very clear, even when there was non-payment, that the committee, has a particular focus on just conducting the inquiry. We are not at the Department of Justice. We are not the PPSA, nor are we the Minister of Finance. But we then said we can play a facilitative role and ensure that, uh, uh, because if we don't do that, it will imp impact on this. And we did that until the, the, the monies that were outstanding were paid. And even on Friday, we indicated that outside of this, whatever we can do, we'll play that role to, 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 to ensure that those who must do something can mm -hmm. do that. Whether she must go get funding from legal aid, which is a state institution mm -hmm. that all of us get uh, supported by, or whether the Justice Department can assist. And from Monday up until today, end of as tomorrow, that's what we're focusing on to ensure that those role players will play a role uh, to, to, to assist. The evidence leaders would not have been uh, supported financially by the public protector South Africa's office because they don't belong in there. Mm. She belongs into, it is the institution 
that she belongs into that has come into financial difficulties. And we're, we're working around the clock to ensure that she comes back to the inquiry as we're resuming next week. If everything goes well between now and Tuesday, we're either going to resume as an inquiry if we're unlocking this funding or we'll continue to just complete what, what we have started because there is no way that we're going to leave this in the middle. They, there are no two possible outcomes. There's only the fact that we want to ensure that she's either fit to hold office or not fit, fit to hold office. We don't have a middle wish that will just end without any of those two. We're out of time in 10 seconds. She's written to you to say that you must halt these proceedings. They're illegal. She's given you until tomorrow to respond. Listening to you then, her, the answer will be no. We're invited, inviting a back to the inquiry next week. Um, and, and, and quite clearly, I've said this before, Advocate Mkwebane, when she is aggrieved, she's free to go to any platform, to any court, to raise her issues. But we can't just be asked to stop the work of parliament, the work of committee, with no basis. There certainly are no basis for this. Thank you so much for your time. Let's see then what happens next week. And hopefully, if, uh, if, if, if you're able to, then maybe we might invite you back on the show to see how then do you proceed and what happens there. Thank you so much for your time. That was Kabutile uh, Tianji, chair of the Section 194 inquiry. They say that they're inviting the public, the uh, suspended public protector back um, to the inquiry next week. And you know she's written a letter to have this process, uh, you know, halted. So let's see what uh, develops from there.